What's up, my fellow quarantined nerds? Ryan Adam Wells here. Uh, I've been talking for a while about starting up a channel doing cocktails based around Marvel Comics characters. I was going to spend a lot of time developing it and go intense on production value and like have all kinds of special guests and things. And then what happened? This mess. So I'm trapped in my apartment uh, and I have some cocktail supplies left over from when I was prepping for the channel. Now before you see everything that you will possibly need to make these cocktails that I'm going to recommend to you today, we're going to do a twist on a daiquiri and a twist on a batita. Now the daiquiri, there's a great video out there from How to Drink that tells you all about the history of the daiquiri, tells you where it came from. I'm not going to waste my time doing that because that video exists, so go check that out, watch that, then come back here we're going to talk about my twist. So we are going to focus today on my very favorite South American character in all of Marvel Comics, the party animal known as Roberto da Costa, Sunspot. Created by legendary writer Chris Claremont and artist Bob McLeod, Roberto da Costa was born in Brazil to a rich and not-so-secretly evil businessman named Emmanuel da Costa. By looking at him, I'm sure you can see that he was also the white rook of future X-Men villains, the Hellfire Club. You know, the super hot mega rich sex junkies that always dress in skimpy leather and totally didn't introduce generations of kids to BDSM. Lol. Anyway, Roberto's mom was a white American archaeologist named Nina, and you can tell by the look on her face in one of her only appearances in canon exactly what type of husband Emmanuel was. Ha <laughs> ha! Not good. Roberto grew up a privileged and popular teen soccer star until one day his entire body blew up on the soccer field and he emerged a shiny being of dark energy. Everyone shunned him except for his lovely girlfriend Juliana, who, because it's comics, promptly took a bullet for him to further his story. Kids, this is a terrible trope called women in refrigerators, and it is to be avoided at all costs. This is an early instance, so I suppose it's less of an offender, but do a Google and learn about this. Get mad, cool off, buck against it from here on out in your life, and let's continue the video. Professor Xavier recruits Bobby to the New Mutants, his teenage training squad. There's no way that could go wrong. Oh no, Doug's dead! During this time, Bobby becomes best friends with Samuel Guthrie, this gangly Kentucky Fried geek who grows up to be the badass X-Man, leader, and Avenger Cannonball. Bobby even becomes godfather to Sam's kid after he falls in love with a superwoman space guardian from Iowa named Smasher. Ah, uh, comics. After a while, Prof X goes to live with his Shi'ar space bay Lalandra and leaves a totally reformed Magneto in charge of the school. Look at him. Look. Totally reformed. He didn't, like, lean into an even more evil version of his costume or anything. This guy's the babysitter now. So, of course, Magneto was secretly working with the Hellfire Club, which pisses Bobby off since that's his dad's bros, and they killed his girl, so the New Mutants tell Mags to screw off and they all go rogue, eventually meeting ruggedly handsome future commando Josh Brolin... Um, Cable. Cable is far too militaristic for Bobby's tastes, and at the same time, Bobby's dad croaks, so he heads back to Brazil to be rich and to know peace. Which is the only way we can know peace in this shitty existence. Smash cut two! The new mutants are now X-Force, and Bobby's life sucks, so he comes back. They have all kinds of crazy adventures over the years until Bobby is made the new Black King of the Hellfire Club. He turns the secret mutant sex cult into a legit business, and he and Sam retire together to a fancy island somewhere with daiquiris and pretty ladies until they get the call from Captain Freakin' America to come and be Avengers. They kick ass all over the galaxy avenging stuff until Roberto uses his charm, guile, and millions of dollars to overtake the villainous AIM, Advanced Idea Mechanics, rebranding it as Avengers Idea Mechanics, and starting his own government-funded team, the U.S. Avengers. During this time, Bobby reveals that using his powers is slowly killing him, so he spends his time behind the desk directing missions as Citizen V. The U.S. Avengers eventually are defunded, and Bobby joins his new mutant pals for one last mission against invading frost giant hordes, during which he saves the day by using his powers one last time and exploding into tiny atoms, dying a hero. But this is comics, so that didn't last, and he's back after some mutant hoodoo, living in the Shi'ar territory with Bobby and Smasher and their kid, being his zany party animal self while trying to woo the heart of psychotic space warrior Deathbird. Say it with me. Ah, comics. Sunspot fun fact, Bobby appeared on a few episodes of the cartoon X-Men Evolution, voiced by Michael Coleman, was played by Adam Canto in the film Days of Future Past, and is about to be played by Brazilian actor Henry Zaga in the New Mutants film, if it's ever released. <laughs> uh, probably not. First cocktail. We're going to call this the Citizen V. So the Citizen V is going to be a twist on the daiquiri. Some of you out there might be saying, Ryan, daiquiri is a New Orleans drink. Why should this should be a Gambit video? Well, I say to you, you drunken fools, no. false. The daiquiri is traditionally a Cuban drink. Lime, rum, sugar, that's it. This one has strawberries in it though, because I made it and I think it looks pretty. So Roberto has always been kind of a troublemaker. I kind of always thought of him as the Ferris Bueller of the New Mutants. 
He doesn't really care about the rules. He wants to have fun. He wants to party. He wants to flirt with all the girls. He wants to have a good time. So a daiquiri reaction makes sense for him. What we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna pretty it up a little bit. We're gonna make it a little bit more complicated. We're gonna make it more more similar to what Roberto da Costa's energy is. So what I need you to do is you need to get a jalapeno pepper, one large or two small strawberries. Cut the tops off your strawberries, toss them into your shaker. I would say cut two nice thick chunks of jalapeno right about there, right about that. That's what you want, two of those. Toss them in with the strawberries. Get out your trusty muddler. Now when you're muddling, you wanna be careful that you're not actually breaking the fruit. You don't wanna be crushing it. You just kind of want to lightly massage it and get the juices and the oils out and into the tin, into the shaker. Traditionally, a daiquiri is made with white rum. I did not have any white rum, which actually led to me creating this cocktail and tying it into Sunspot because it makes a lot of sense for him. We are going to use spiced rum because all I had was this <laughs> uh, Captain Morgan spiced rum that was gifted to me. You're going to do an ounce and a half of the spiced rum. Measure it out into your jigger. All right, we got that spiced rum in there. Now. You're gonna cut a lime in half, and we want roughly an ounce of lime juice. Jalapeno, strawberry, lime, rum. What are we missing? Sugar. Now, if I was making a white rum daiquiri, I would probably just use a white simple syrup. But for Roberto's Citizen V daiquiri, we're gonna class it up a little bit. So I've made a red wine simple syrup. This is a full bottle of red wine, three large cinnamon sticks, two pieces of star anise, and a small like pinch of cloves tossed into the same pot with the same one-on-one -on -one ratio, red wine and brown damara sugar. Brought it to all to a boil. I let this simmer for a little bit longer than I would have for any other kind of simple syrup because I really wanted the cinnamon and the cloves and the star anise to work their way into the flavor of the syrup. So I let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Double stain it to make sure we don't have any chunks of cinnamon or star anise or clove floating in there. And you got this lovely little rich red wine syrup and it is really, really tasty and I love it a lot. But since we're using a spiced rum and we're using jalapenos and strawberries, this red wine syrup is gonna really enrich this cocktail. It's gonna make it something decadent, something fitting for Roberto to sip on while he sits at US Avengers Control. What you want is you want 0.5 ounces of this. Got all the ingredients in there. I'm using classic, old school freezer ice cubes. Oh yeah, that's how we do here. It's gonna be awesome. I don't know what to tell you guys, it's just, Options are limited, you gotta work with what you got. All right, ingredients and ice are in the tin. Put your top on, put your lid on. Give that sucker a shake. Don't look at me when I'm shaking. I'm very self-conscious about my shake. I know some, some arrogant bartender is gonna leave a comment in the cocktails that I'm shaking the wrong way. You know what, I'm shaking my way. This is the marble way. I can't believe how stocked I was for this quarantine. I still had an ice ball. So we're gonna make this cocktail real pretty. Drop your ice ball into your glass. Set your tongs to the side. We're gonna double strain this guy out. That nice red color from the strawberries. And I can smell the heat from the jalapenos. And there we have it. A big part of cocktail creation is your garnish. So what I recommend for this cocktail to garnish and make it nice and pretty, cut another little sliver of jalapeno, make a little divot in it, find your best looking strawberry and cut just a slice of it. And there we have it, Citizen V. Now, just gotta try it, make sure it turned out like my heart's desire. I hate rum, I hate it. But I would drink this every day of the week. This is awesome. All that's missing is chilling on some beach in Shiara territory, Deathbird on my left, and my good buddy Cannonball on the right. Sip one of these guys and all day, every day. Oh, Citizen B, hell yes. Oh, I did good. One cocktail down. Sunspot fun fact. For a brief period of time, X-Force was being attacked by this incredibly stupid looking villain with an even dumber name, 
Rainfire. Everyone thought he kind of looked like Bobby, and spoiler alert, it was. Bobby had developed a touch of DID because apparently no comic book authors in the 90s understood what DID was or how it worked. So, when the Age of Apocalypse came and rewrote all of history, the writers chose to use this as an opportunity to write their way out of this dangerous and potentially offensive corner, retconning Rainfire to be a symbiote that took over Bobby. They were soon separated and Rainfire was sent to the place for comic stuff that we pretend never happened, alongside Alpha and the Stacy Twins. <laughs> Comics are dumb and I love them. Seriously though, don't Google the Stacy Twins. It's terrible. So you'll notice that I have scaled down what was sitting on the table. That means we are gonna start on cocktail number two. This one I'm calling Sunspot. Real talk. One of my goals with these nerd drinks is I'm not gonna name them just like what the characters are for the most part. But sometimes it's appropriate, sometimes it fits. It has fit for both of these cocktails for Roberto because he is a very egotistical character and he would totally just name the drinks after himself. So this is the Sunspot. We're going to do a twist on a cocktail called the Banana Batita. And the Banana Batita is itself a twist on, the, on a classic cocktail called the Caparina. The Caparina is a Brazilian drink made with cachaça. Cachaça is a spirit kind of similar to, kind of similar to rum. It has a much sweeter flavor. I always kind of say it tastes kind of like, if you ever like make jello, and you ever like sip the jello mix before you, before you put it in the refrigerator, it's kind of what cachaça tastes like to me. And I love it. It makes me feel like I'm a kid and I'm drinking when I'm not supposed to be drinking, which is also appropriate for Roberto da Costa. The Banana Batita is a twist on the Caparina. It uses cachaça and lime. In place of the sugar that you would find in a Caparina, it is recommended that you use either a passion fruit syrup or coconut cream, which we're gonna use today, and some other kind of fruit agent, um, oftentimes a banana. I'm not gonna, almost like a cat. We are going to twist it up just a little bit. We're gonna add some orange flavor in there for good measure. This cocktail is a dessert cocktail. It's something you're supposed to sit and sip on while you're looking at the ocean in a beach chair. So, the sunspot. We're gonna start two ounces of cachaça. Caprino's cachaça drinks, they're often intended to be a little bit boozier than the average drink. So we're gonna lean into that. Two ounces cachaça. Do you like that I wore a shirt that was appropriate for these cocktails and this video and this character? Because Sunspot would totally wear this shirt. He would wear it, he'd probably unbutton like two more buttons. This is, this is the, this is, eh. This is going to save, save Nova Roma look. Anyway, again, we're gonna wanna do an ounce of lime, which usually factors into being about one lime. Sometimes I'll just squeeze the lime right over the tin. I decided to give up on that new lime juicer I bought. You see it right there? I didn't like it. Didn't work so well in the first video, so. Ha, ah, man, what a waste of $3 at Walmart, am I right? <laughs> just squeezing the lime, that's all we're doing here. Talking to myself in an empty apartment. Squeezing the lime, getting lime on my fingers. The dog's to my right, he looks real annoyed with me. After an eternity, pour your one ounce of fresh lime into the shaker along with your cachaça. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to get a coconut cream of some kind. You wanna do an ounce of coconut cream. I really fully believe that the best cocktails are made with love and care and dedication to giving you every single ounce of money that you spent. I'm gonna get anything that's a part of your cocktail fully into that damn shaker. Okay, banana liqueur. I do not recommend using the cuppers. It's just what I had. It was literally like on the very, very far back of my alcohol shelf. I had forgotten I even bought it. Uh, there is better creme de banana out there. But at the end of the day, it's a liqueur that you're gonna use in warm cocktail. So if you don't wanna spend $45 on gourmet creme de banana, I totally understand. You can get this for 10 bucks. It'll have the same effect. Uh, it's just not as quite as delicious. We're gonna do half an ounce of this. Also, in lieu of this, if you don't have creme de banana and you don't have time and you don't want to go out there, you can absolutely do about a fourth of an actual banana and muddle it into there, like we did in the previous cocktail. Muddle about a fourth of a banana into there and you're gonna get that flavor. It won't be as boozy, but you can go heavier on uh, what we're about to use next. The orange liqueur. What I have for orange liqueur is Cointreau. Everybody knows Cointreau. It's what rubes think goes in a margarita. We'll, do, we'll talk about margaritas on a different video, but. Keep it simple for margaritas, please. Please, you're killing me. One fourth of an ounce. You kind of just want to get a little bit of orange in there. And the cocktail's already pretty boozy. We got two ounces of cachaça, so we don't want to go completely overboard. Now for the sad news. 
Uh, I like to do a couple dashes of orange bitters or orange flower water if I have it into the tin just to add a little bit of extra orange kick. Sadly, one of the cats um, saw to it that that was not a possibility for me and my orange bitters is no more. So we're just going to do a dash of Angostura instead, uh, a liberal dash because you do want a little bit of that bitter to come through. And it's any tiki cocktail, you want bitter, sour, sweet, and boozy. So a dash of the Ango bitters. If you have orange, use orange instead, but this will be fine for a quarantine cocktail. Now, all of our ingredients are in the tin. Ice. You don't need any of your strainers for the sunspot. Shake and dump. This is a delicious dessert cocktail. Even if you had the orange bitters, I want, to get, I want you to get some Ango bitters because this is where we're going to make the sunspots. Just a dash or two on top. If you have a dropper, that's better. Those are your sunspots. And as per usual, if you want to do a nice garnish, I'm going to grab an orange and we're going to do just a very light and easy peel. Zest along the glass, get the oils out so that when you're drinking it, you get a nice whip of orange. And there you have it, folks. The sunspot. And now, cheers. Let's make sure it tastes all right. It's like a cake. This is all I want for my birthday. I just want potatoes. I don't want. I don't want. Don't give me an actual cake. Give me this and like some tortilla chips and salsa. Actually, make a chilaquiles with beans and rice. Ooh, and quesadillas. Oh, arepas, tamales. You know what? Okay, I do want. I do want a cake. I changed my mind. Give me a cake. But also this. Yeah, this worked out great. The sunspot. Go get you some cachaca, some coconut cream, and you probably have everything else to make that. So, I hope you enjoyed this first foray into nerd cocktails. Uh, let me know what you thought about it. Give me some comments. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. These videos are going to change and grow. Let me know in the comments what character you'd like to see me make cocktails for. Who knows, maybe they'll be the next one. I'm not against doing cocktails for any character. They said Wolverine. Wolverine's everywhere. We don't need Wolverine. You don't need a Wolverine cocktail. Don't ask me for that. So, leave comments below. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Thanks for coming around. Excelsior. Keep drinking. Be safe, too. Ooh, also, you can make this a mocktail very easily. Use the muddled banana. Use a muddled orange. Use the coconut cream. Instead of the two ounces of cachaca and instead of the lime, use a limeade. Uh, you can make a homemade limeade very simply. It's very easy. Just juice some limes, add some water, and add some simple syrup or some sugar. Shake that up in your tin, and then you got limeade. So two ounces of limeade and muddled orange, muddled banana, coconut cream, and you have yourself a non-alcoholic banana petita, and it'll be just as good. So if you're not a drinker, please indulge in that delicious dessert mocktail. Thanks for watching, folks. Enough said. But Ryan, you say, what would Sunspot shoot? What, what, what would... Roberto de Costa shoot if he was doing shots, you asked me. Here's what I think he would do. He'd probably, I think that Roberto would call this shot, my dad's a dick. Which I know a lot of you out there can relate to. So we're gonna do equal parts brandy and banana liqueur. Screw you, Mr. DeCosta, you're a dick. <laughs>